talk into the mic, okay, so everybody can hear you. I'm going to get finished with this, and I'm going to actually bug out of here and get back up to the hospital, and then Rocky's going to come up and, and close the service. All right, let me shut this off. Amen. Can you hear me now? Yes. Amen. So you guys know for the last couple of months, I've been talking about, um, about healing, about that God wants us healed, God wants us whole. I never expected that we would come up against all this opposition. Um, when you start speaking about things, you come up with op opposition. We've had a lot of opposition lately. Um, we're not, we're not um, too troubled about it, although it does trouble you. And by the way, Phil mentioned the land across the street. The land across the street is actually under contract right now. That means that somebody is buying it. And so, and so that was a little bit of a, uh, you know. But God's got a plan. God's got a plan, and we've got to believe that the plan is a good plan, and it's better than anything. And he knows the beginning from the end. Um, one of the possibilities that I thought in my own mind, because we had to borrow money, that maybe we're not at the capacity where we were going to be able to handle that and borrow money to buy that land. So, you know, Father knows best. He knows what's best for us, and he knows the direction we're going. So, But that's that part of it. So how many know, um, <laughs> how many ever heard the, uh, you, you get on a, you hear the news and, and, and you hear a newscaster go, and here's what we know, and here's what we know, okay? And so I want to... Um, I want to preach on here's what we know, but that's not the title of my message. The title of my message is that uh, we are triune. We are triune. People are triune. And that's where we get the word Trinity from. Triune, right? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And those three are one. And we are triune too. And the three parts of us being made up is one. We're, we're, we're one. But I want to start out with um, 2 Timothy 3.16. Because while we go through the scriptures, right, while we're, we're using the scriptures all the time, when we're going through the scriptures, you've got to remember, here's Paul that was called by God. He had, a, he had a, a relationship with Jesus on the Damascus Road, right? He had experience with Jesus, and Jesus used him as a chosen vessel, and Jesus spoke into him as the Spirit led him to say certain things and to lead his church. He was an apostle. He was a church planter. So he knows a lot about churches. And so planting the church, and he met young Timothy, who he took under his wing as, his, as a, a father to Timothy. He was a father to Timothy. Took him under his wing, and he was training Timothy and told him some of the things that he was going to need to do or some of the things he was going to encounter. And he spoke things into Timothy's life. And one of the things he spoke into Timothy's life was this. And this is out of the NLT. All Scripture is inspired by God. It's breathed by God. So when we go through these Scriptures that I'm going to use today, I want you to know that that word is inspired by God. It was spoken to the men and women of old, and they spoke as the Holy Spirit moved on upon them. So it says, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. What is wrong in our lives? I'm going to hear to declare to you today, and I'm, you know, remember when the preacher's preaching his finger at you? He's pre pushing three back at himself. And I wore this. George gave me this shirt. And, and, and somebody, can you read what it says? Pastor, warning. Anything you say or do should be used in a sermon. <laughs> against you, right? Yeah, yeah. It should be everything the word says can be used against you in a sermon. But I guess I must have said something, and George said, man, that pastor, man, i got to get him that shirt. But he gave me the shirt. I figured I'd, 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 I'd um, wear it. So all Scripture, is, and so, and so let, me, let me go back now. So, so we have, we're, we're triune, we're spirit, soul, and we live in a body, right? We're spirit, soul, and we live in a body. And the thing of it is, if you go to a funeral, if you ever went to a funeral and there's a body laying there, what is missing from the body? The, the spirit, but the soul is too. And we're going we're gonna to not only define them so that we know when we're walking, we're walking in a triune way. And you're going to be able to tell when you're in the flesh or you're in the spirit or you're just acting like a meathead in the body. Okay, you're going to know. And so, and so we're, we're triune. And then he goes on to say it corrects us when we are wrong. 
It teaches us to do what's right, okay? I want to declare to you today that in the United States of America, as that doctor told me, we're the sickest nation on the face of the earth. We're sick because our diets, the way we eat, we don't eat right. We eat a lot of... Pro what I'm saying is this is nothing new to you. We eat a lot of processed food. We eat foods that aren't good for us. And then when we get older, all that stuff starts to catch up with you. And then you wind up with cirrhosis of the liver. You wind up with heart disease. You wind up with diabetes. You wind up with this. And you wind up with that. So when we're talking about the truth, it teaches us, the Bible, the Word of God, teaches us to do what's right. Okay? That's a good deal. Because, you know, the Lord wants you to have a long life. The Lord wants us to be whole. He doesn't want us to be sick because he sent his word to heal our diseases, right? So that's the body part of it. So I want to I wanna challenge us is when you're shopping, try to get into the habit of starting to incorporate whole foods into your life. Whole foods into your life. You'll feel better. Matter of fact, uh, some of us this past 21 days, we did the Daniel fast, and that's just vegetables. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't hungry as I used to be. I mean, some of the stuff that you're eating, starches and all that stuff and bread and all that, it just causes you, it spikes your sugar, right? And you're just more hungrier than you were. You're, oh, I'm always hungry. But this week I was thinking, wow. And I heard, I mean, avocados, I didn't know that they were that good for you, man. Things are loaded. They're really good for you, avocados. And, uh, but, but so, so I realized that, man, when you eat whole foods, number one, you're not as hungry and you're not a, you're not a, a, a junkie. You're not a, you're not a sugar junkie. And so some things you should cut out of your life or else later on in your life, there's a possibility that you're going to deal. How, how many else fasted uh, this 21 days? I think, uh, yeah. So all you guys that fasted, did you notice a difference? You notice the difference, right? Not only, not only in your body, not in your body. But what, what, what your body actually affects your soul, and we'll get into that as we go down. So then he goes, um, to do what's right, but God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Now, I'm just talking about the body. It goes, it goes into the soul and the spirit, but when I'm talking about the body, man, if you are sick, you can't do a blessed thing. One of the things I remember when I had that heart attack in 2011, that was my biggest problem with it, is that I was... I, I got debilitated, right? Matt, you know what it's like to be debilitated when you had a, such an active life and now you can't do anything. And that's one of the struggles Barb's having now because she's so debilitated. And so it plays on your soul. We're going to get into all this. So the, we're, we're a triune person. We're, tri, we're triune, meaning three parts in one. That's where we get our word Trinity from. And I was so surprised that I talked to people, even people that were of the Catholic persuasion, I asked them about, do you know what the word Trinity means? And they didn't have a clue. They didn't have a clue. And that, you taught that, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And so, and so uh, I'm, I got a lot of material here. If I don't cover it uh, this time, I'll get it next time. So, uh, so you are, we're made up of three distinct parts. We're made up of our, our spirit, our soul, and our bodies. Spirit, soul, and bodies. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, just to, to prove this, it says, Now my God, the God of peace himself, sanctify you, set you apart, sanctify you completely. God wants to sanctify us and set us apart completely, complete, not just in our spirits and not just in our souls, but in our bodies. And you go on to say, he goes on to say, completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved that means that word preserved means holy, complete. He wants us, our bodies holy, complete. Remember, go back to all scriptures been given by the inspiration of God. Holy, complete, holy, complete, and, 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 and your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved, be preserved blameless, holy called at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord wants us to be whole without mental illness, without emotional wounds, or physical sickness, his desire is wholeness in our spirit, our souls, and our bodies. <coughs> oh, excuse me. He desires for us to be whole in our spirit and our souls and on our bodies. And I want to define those things so we walk out of here today that we will see the difference of it. And you're going to also know when you are, which one you're operating in. 
If you pay attention to it after today, you're going to know whether you're uh, operating in your spirit, in your soul, or in your body. Is that fair? He wants us whole in his spirit. Sin. So if, if he, thank you, Richard. If he didn't want us, if he didn't want us whole in our spirits, our souls, and our body, he would have never went to the cross. Jesus would have never went to the cross if he didn't want us whole in our spirit, souls, and bodies, right? Because he completed the work that the Lord God sent him here to do. And so um, sin will damage us, and it still does. Sin damages us. Actually, Chris is going to do some things about gluttony and things we do to our bodies. And gluttony is a sin. The scripture says that if, you have, if you're a glutton, if you're gluttony, if you're gluttonous, he said, put a knife to your throat. That's pretty strong language. And uh, so sin damages others, especially the ones we love. Sin can cause illness in our spirit, our souls, and our bodies. So a lot of times we are affected because of sin in our life, and, and our bodies wind up sick. And they were soul sick, too. There's a thing called soul sickness. And so only God can, can heal these three different parts of our, of our makeup. He is the only one that can make us whole. God wants to heal the broken heart, and he wants to, God wants to heal the broken and bruised parts of our lives. He desires to bring life and power to our spirits and restore our souls and bring healing to our bodies. When and, when, when and where did this happen? It happened at Calvary. He went to Calvary to bring healing to our spirits, because our spirits, our spirits, we were separated from God because of sin. So he brought healing to our spirits, because here's a good, if you're not born again, the scripture says you're dead in your trespasses and sins. So you're really walking around like a dead man waiting to die. You're just waiting for your dad to die. You, you are separated from God you got to be born again into the Spirit, because he said, you got to be born of the water and of the Spirit. He told Nicodemus, right? you got to be born again. you got to be born of the water and of the Spirit. And once you get born of the Spirit, now your spirit is in right relationship with God. It's in right, 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 and, and guess what? Whatever one of them that you lean on, your spirit, soul, or body, if you lean on your soul you're going to be separated from your spirit that's connected to God. We need to, be, we need to walk in the spirit, in the spirit, and we will not fulfill it. Now, what does that mean? So also, he says, you, those that worship God, worship him in what? Spirit. Not, somebody said it this morning, not singing songs. Right. Not singing songs. It's worshiping in the spirit. It's a different realm of worship. That's what happened with that song when the music fades because they were, they were, they were having controversy over the equipment and all this. The pastor said, that's where that, when the music fades, that was a song that came out of the pastor putting a hammer down on the, the musicians in the, in, the, in the music ministry because they had all kinds of stuff going on. He said, okay, guess what? No more music. When the music fades and all the way, I will simply come. I got to get back to the heart of worship. He wanted us to get back to the, to the heart of worship. God wants to heal the broken heart, brokenhearted, the bruised parts of our lives. He desires to bring life and power to our spirit. He wants to restore our souls. He wants to bring healing to our bodies. Let me say something about that. Try to think about this. When these people that went up in, in front of some great circumstances... I always bring up the Red Sea because they're, they're circumstances that people understand. I always bring up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because that's things that we can understand. These people were just like us, but they were up against it. They were up against it. And they really didn't know what the outcome. Matter of fact, the Israelites, they, 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 didn't, they, they wanted to go back to Egypt. That's how freaked out they got. But Moses was taking them through the sea. God was taking them through the sea. And it's really difficult sometimes when you're right up against it. When you're right up against it is when we have to have faith. And, and like here, you're here this morning because you have faith. You have faith and you're, and you're believing God. You're believing God for not only yourself, but you believe in God to, 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 to do something. Amen? 
And so in our spirit souls in our bodies, and he brings healing to our bodies. I want, I, want to, um, I want to convey two stories, people in the Bible, actually it's three stories, of people in the body, the woman with the issue of blood, the guy that was out of his mind, and the little girl who died. I want, I want to bring that to us, and that should be up on the screen. Let's see. Oh, you want me to tell you what the scripture is? <laughs> the first one, the first scripture will be Mark 9, 14 to 29. Did I give you that? Okay. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, the scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? The one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought my son who, was, uh, who had a mute spirit, and whatever these uh, seizures seizure, him, he, 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 it was thrown at him down, he foamed at the mouth, he gnashed at his teeth, and he became rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. The, ca- the, the disciples could not cast out that spirit. This was a spirit, this was a, a, a deno- dem- demonic spirit that was on this man. He answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you, and how long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. In other words, Jesus was no nonsense. He was, bring him to me. I don't know about you, but I want to be no nonsense. Even in the midst of it, and, and, and when things aren't looking good, and when, and when you're getting a bad report from the doctors or whatever, I, don't, I want to be no nonsense when it comes to what God has said. Um, next verse. I'm going to 29. And, and, he, and, he, uh, and, then, and then they brought him to him, and he saw him, and immediately the spirit convulsed. And he fell on the ground. He waddled, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from his childhood. Here was this guy that was, that was tormented from his childhood. And often he throws himself in the fire, I haven't seen that lately, and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, can you have compassion on us and help us? And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. we got to believe when, all thi- when things are happening to us, not when they're not happening to us. It's easy to believe then. It's hard to believe when things are happening to us. And believe me, I'm talking to you today and I'm talking to me. Is that, man, you, you get right at the line there and you're going, wait, God, am I going to, is this your will? You got, uh, you know, all this stuff. No, he said, he said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So we're believing today. You're here today because you're believing that there's a heaven and that Jesus went to the cross for you and that you're on your way there. But in the meantime, while you're here in the church and you're here in life, that you're going to have one challenge after another, one victory after another. Amen. I mean, last week, although I'm mad at them today because of the, the, the thing that they did on TV uh, all the Kansas City uh, players getting drunk and being on national TV and acting like a bunch of jerks. I'm sorry even what I said about them last week, that they were giving God praise and all that stuff. I know they're, <laughs> they're in the process too, but all the kids watching them in there. But they had a victory. I don't know if anybody watched the game, but, man, it was under the wire and they were in overtime and they, they had a victory. And, 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 and just think about how did that feel? Now, that's just a game. How does it feel when we have a victory over the enemy? How does it feel when somebody uh, 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 legitimately gets healed or you get a job or whatever that you're up against and you get healed? And man, what a victory. I don't know about you, but I want to shout the victory. I want to have a victory. I can't wait that we can have a victory over Barb's healing. I can't wait. And boy, it sure would look like, I, I, I think by now, after all the prayers across the world and everything, that she would have signs of getting better. But as of yesterday, it wasn't looking that good until she got this blood, and now her things are, her things are coming back again. And, and praise God, I just prayed it uh, next time we hear from her. Barb, next time we hear, we heard, pray that them levels are up to where they need to be. Amen. And uh, immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Well, now he's saying, I believe, but I have this unbelief going on. You know what I'm talking about? Like sometimes you're thinking, oh, man, I got this. I'm full of faith. I believe. I believe. And then all of a sudden the enemy comes in and says, oh, yeah, 
How about this one? Think about this. And that's really what happened to me last night. And I'm saying, God, is that you or the devil? When I got home last night, and I felt such a sense of loss. Because my place that we built, blood, sweat, and tears, the Lord allowed Barb and I to build that, and she wasn't there. And that was hard on me. To, it, was, it was painful to see that. And so he said, help my unbelief. But then Jesus saw the people come running together. He rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. I mean, Jesus has the power, right? He's God, on, God manifested in the flesh. And he gave us that power. He gave the power to the church. Um, so, and, and, and so, the, is that 29, right? Yeah, 29. This kind, oh no, it, it, it goes, but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and arose. And when he came out into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we cast him out? And, and so he said to them, this kind uh, can uh, come out only nothing by prayer and by fasting. It's another level of faith. And as Phil was saying, I mean, we can't play with the Lord. We're, in it, we're going to do that uh, lesson in May, March 4th, all in. You're either all in or you're out. There's not going to be half-stepping. Now, if you're on your journey of being all in, that's good. But if you're not on your journey of all in, you can't be just going in and out. You've got to be in. So when these times do come, not if they come, when these times do come, you'll be able to rebuke the devil. You'll be able to rebuke the sickness and disease. So let's look at the next set of scriptures. This is the one in Luke uh, 8, 40 to 56. Luke 8, 40 to 56. So, so it was when Jesus returned that the multitudes uh, welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and, and he was a ruler of the synagogues. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. You know, they wanted a little bit of what he had too. Now, a woman having a flow of blood, I wonder what I jumped uh, uh, into this, but I guess it was just part of it. But now, a woman, now that had a flow of blood, 12 years, had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any. Um, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her blood flow stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and those who were with him, Master, he said, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, who touched me? And we're going next. And, but Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceive power going out of me. So he's saying, somebody really reached out and touched me. Somebody was really serious about their worship, about their, their belief in me. Somebody really was serious about this. I mean, we need to be serious about this stuff. This is a matter of life and death. Somebody touched me. Now, when a woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him, and she declared to him, in the presence of the people and the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Move right along. We're going to get back to the boy. While he was still speaking, someone came from the rulers of the synagogue's house and saying to him, your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. If she's dead, don't trouble him. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, Do not be afraid, only believe, and she will be made well. So it's all of us about believing, being doers of the word, and believing what God's word says. I know it's risky because I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to be dis dis uh, discouraged. I don't want what I think might happen, happen. I want to, I want to have faith, right? And he says, your daughter, your daughter is dead, and, and, and don't trouble the teacher. But when Jesus heard it, he answered and said, do not be afraid, only believe, and she will be made well. When he came into his house, he permitted no one to, to go and accept Peter, James, and John, and the father of the mother of the girl. You know why? He didn't want a bunch of doubters around him. He only wanted those that were going to believe. You know, we know that 
all things are possible to him that believes, not doubters. It's hard for me too. It's hard for me too, at times, by what I see, to believe and not doubt. Am I the only one in this house? It's hard. Moving right along. Uh, where are we at here? They, they ridiculed him knowing that she was dead. Ah, yeah, 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 she's going to get better, yeah, yeah, we know, yeah, we know you faith guys and you believe in God and all this, yeah, 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 she's dead. But he put them all outside and took her by the hand and called her and saying, little girl, arise. Little girl, arise. Can you, I don't know there's a word for it, but man, he was, it wasn't just a positive confession. I mean, he had the power of God. He was God in the flesh moving through him. Moving right along. That's the end of it right there. This is how the God we serve functions. Let's look at the three parts of our makeup. Your spirit relates upward to God. Your spirit relates upward to God. When you're worshiping God in spirit and truth, you're, you're worshiping Him in the spirit. You're not in the soul and you're not in the flesh. You can be, but you need to be in the spirit. You need to touch the throne of heaven when you're worshiping. The soul relates to your inward self, your soul. The body relates to the outward world. You are triune. Each one of us has three parts that must be in harmony with each other. Our spirits, souls, and bodies need to be in harmony with each other. That's why fasting, when you fast, I don't care if whether it's fasting your cell phone. When you're fasting, you are putting your body and your soul. Why do I say soul? Because your, your soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. Your soul is what makes the suggestion to your body to do something, right? Didn't your soul say to you this morning, hey, Phil, you better get up this morning. It's time for church. You're running late. Or maybe the spirit was saying that to him. But your soul must be in harmony with each other. Every part has a special role or function to play for it to run well, much like the body of Christ, which we're going to get into, as Phil said this morning, when the parts function in harmony with others, with with each other, things go well. And that goes for every area of your life. When we're in harmony, that goes for in your home life, your work life, your church life. And this subject is vast. But most of us, we don't take time to actually study the Word of God to find out what these parts actually do. So I'm going I'm to t- you know, teach it to you today. So the first part, it's the Greek word for spirit. It means breath. It's a lungs disease where we get the word uh, pneumonia. We get it, it takes name from this term because it's about the breath. Remember Jesus said, nobody knows where the spirit it blows where it wills. That's God's spirit. That's the spirit of God. And then the second one, the Greek word is soul. It's the psyche. That's where we get our our word psychology from. Therefore, it's the study of the mind of man. So when you talk about your soul, you're talking about your mind, your will. You can't teach willingness, right? Your will and your emotions. That's your soul. Your spirit is the one that's connected to God. And then here comes Finally, uh, the Greek word for, your, for your, um, your body is soma. It's psychosomatic, right? Soma, psychosomatic, soul body. Disease or disorders of the body are caused by mental and emotional soul-related problems. So when we're having uh, problems in our body, a lot of them are soul-related. Our soul, it's, a, it's about how we think. That's why the scripture says, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. It's how you think. We say it in the prison, it's stinking thinking. We're not thinking right. We're not thinking right. And there's a whole lot more in that, which I'm going to spare you of that part of it. But just knowing the difference that you're triune, and you'll tell uh, what you're you're operating in. We need to know the definition of, of, of original language because this is key. When we know the original, when people say, it's like a, why didn't they call a hammer a sink? Because it's a hammer. I don't know why they called it a hammer. 
I, I, I'm, I could look it up and say, this is why they called it a hammer. Now, a sink makes sense because it's sunk, right? But everything has an origin to it. So when we're looking at the Word, especially when we're studying the Bible, we need to know what the Word means so we can connect it all the dots, so to speak. Knowing the definition of the original language is key. The Lord spoke to Ezekiel concerning the spirit, soul, and body. Ezekiel 36, 23 to 27. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned. You know, my great name, he says, has been, has been um, I will sanctify, he says, I'll, I'll purify my name, my great name, which has to be profaned, which means his name has been disrespected among the nations, which you have profaned in the midst of the nations, and, and shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, where I am hallowed. And I said, hallowed, what does that mean? I mean, we say, hallowed be thy name. When I am noticed, when I am noticed, this word hallowed means when I am noticed and I am pronounced among you. When I am noticed among you, when my name is hallowed, when I am hallowed in before your eyes. For I will take from you and from among you the nations and, 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 get, and, and gr- greet her. Let me see, not greet her. Let's see, I'll take from you the nations and shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in before their eyes. And I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of the countries and, and I will and gather you out of the countries and bring you into your own land. Next. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from the filthiness of all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take out the heart of stone and your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and cause you to walk in my statues and keep my judgments. Going right along. This is the promise of God. Taking the, the heart of stone. The Lord, the, Lord, the Lord wants us to keep us. A, the Lord wants us to, to change for nothing else if it's just for his namesake. It's for his name to be honored and pronounced. At any given time, we are operating in all three of these things, spirit, soul, and body, all at the same time, but sometimes individually. And then we're going to, this will be the end of this, Galatians 5. Galatians 5, we're going to start in verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty, and do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but, but through love serve one another. Our serving one another is motivated by love. It's not motivated, it's not motivated by ego. It's not motivated by self. It's not motivated by pride. It's motivated by my spirit, our love. We're, our serving is, is motivated by love. We serve one another because we love one another. Amen. It's not motivated by being self-centered. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not out of love. Why, why, do I, why do I do what I do? What, what's the reason? Well, if you look at your spirit, soul, and body, when you're motivating and you're doing something, a lot of times you're not doing out of love. You're doing it because you, you're serving yourself. You're either prideful or you have a big ego. And it's all about you. It's not about serving out of love. We need to serve out of love. Verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's motivated by love. In verse 15, but if you bite and devour one another, when I'm biting and I'm devouring something, I'm in the flesh. I'm in the soul. It's my soul. Something, I got I to gotta, I gotta get one up on you or something. But we're in the soul. You got to recognize when you're operating in your soul. We want to be operating in God's spirit. We got to operate in his spirit. Don't devour one another because at least you be consumed by one another. When this happens, what part of you is in operation? It's your soul. It's your soul and your body. You know, your body, your body's like a ragamuffin. 
or ragdoll. Your body's just like, oh, oh, what's the soul saying? Oh, okay, I, I, I'll go here. Oh, yeah, I'm hungry, yeah. Yeah, I'm there. yeah I want this, I want that. You're, you're, you're just a meathead. You know, your soul suggests it, and then you go do it. Your soul tells you to, to say something to somebody or to do something to somebody or to rise up, especially in the heat of the thing. Your soul will go, oh, man, don't you dare. I don't let him do it. It's ego. It's pride. We've got to recognize those things. We've got to recognize those things. The spirit, soul, and body. Verse 16, I say, then walk in the spirit. Who is this? Walking in the spirit. La, la, la. La, 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 la. And walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You won't allow your soul to just run away. I gave him a piece of my mind. Yeah? I don't want a piece of your mind. Keep it to yourself. I told him off. <laughs> Verse 17. Listen, I didn't write this. <laughs> For the flesh lust, the, the flesh lust, the flesh and the soul will lie to you. They lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And those are contrary. They're an opposite of nature from one another. The spirit is connected to God. I want to walk in the spirit. I want to walk, not, not just in church, but out there. I want to walk in the spirit. They're contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Or, 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 or I wish I wasn't like this. Oh, I wish I didn't do this. Oh, I wish I didn't do that. Well, then don't do it. Then don't do it when the, when the enemy of your soul, mind, will, and emotion, starts to tell you to do a, or say a certain, just don't do it. It's your, it's your will. You can do it. And then verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. For the law of God, a law cannot make you well, only the Spirit of God can. You can determine whether you're walking in the Spirit or walk. You can determine whether you're walking in the flesh or walking in the Spirit on the way you act what, when, you're, when you're up against it. And when you're, what, the way you act and what you practice. What you practice, the way you act and what you practice, you can tell whether you're walking in the Spirit or you're walking in the soul or you're walking in the flesh. Now the works of the flesh, here it is, he spells it right. The works of the flesh, they're evident. You can see them. Just like the works of the Spirit, they are clearly seen also. Which are adultery, sexual morality, fornication, walking in the, walking in the flesh, uncleanliness, physical, physical or moral, lewdness, those that are, that are lewd. They don't fear God. They, they simply do not what they do not what they, they just do what they feel like doing. They feel like doing. They are not in touch with the Spirit of God within them. Just like the soul and the flesh is. Verse 20. Idolatry is an is, 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 is a, is a, a, a image worshipped of the soul. You can, you can worship the image of your thoughts or your actions. That's just the way I am. Sorcery. Magic. The, word, the, word, the Greek word for this is pharmakia. Listen to this. This is something. It's pharmakia, where we get our word pharmacy from. From witchcraft, there are some that practice this, witchcraft, some medications, <laughs> you're going to get this, some medications are dangerous, like CBDs, marijuana, etc., card readers, and occults. Pharmakia, some, some medications are connected to witchcraft. Uh, the illegal ones, LSD and cocaine and some of them other ones. But some of them that are coming out of pharmacia, out of the pharmacy, are also that way. Amen. Exodus twenty two eighteen. 18. You shall not per permit a sorcerer to live. The Lord said this. And then he goes on back into Galatians. He says, hatred and hostilities, unfriendly and aggressive behavior, having a competition. A competitive attitude in the one you are supposed to love. 
Be in competition with the one you love. An idol, some people are an, uh, an idol with the way they are. They're, they're, they're idolizing in the way they grew up. They're idolizing uh, different things and attitudes that they've had that it was imparted into their life. Jealousies. If you are jealous when you have a zeal is in an un- unfavorable way. You're jealous when you have zeal in an unfavorable way. Outbursts of wrath, getting worked up in, in a negative way. Selfish ambitions. Selfish ambitions called, called heated disagreements when I have selfish ambitions. Guys, give me a couple more minutes so I can finish this. We deserve something or it's owed to us. Kindness, easy to get along with, gentle. Are you easy to get along with? Do people like being around you? Or if they, like I said last week, if they see you coming, they go, oh, no, here she comes again. Here he comes again. Drama mama. We're not going to go. We know we're going to go through something around here. I know we got something going on. Their, their drama is their idol. If it wasn't for drama or dysfunction, they're like, oh, man, how do I function? It's an idol. Kindness, easy to get along with, gentle, goodness, able to produce good, showing, show high moral standards, faithfulness. You are able to be trusted. If you're faithful, you're able to be trusted. If people don't trust you and they don't ask you to do anything or meet you somewhere at the bus station that they asked you to go to three times in a row and you didn't show up, I mean, you're not faithful. I'm not going to go and hang out at the bus station again and wait for you if you're not there. Faithful. What you say you're going to do, you do. You're faithful. Gentleness, verse 23, gentleness. Mindness, showing humility. A, a quiet spirit, meek, gentle, easy, imposed, of, of, uh, imposed on submission. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to submit. I'm willing to be self-controlled, self-resistant, being able to control yourself and your emotions and your flesh. Against such things, there's no law. Verse 24 is key. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desired. If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Remember, the soul is connected to the flesh because the soul tells the flesh what to do, right? When your soul goes, hey man, time to eat. Maybe it's not time to eat, but you you deserve a little extra. And your body just goes, ah, okay, that's not a good idea to me, man. And then verse 26, let us not become, let's not, let us not become uh, conceited, provoking one another to envy, envying one another. Bottom line, if we're going to provoke each other, let's be doing it according to the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control. They're the fruits of the Spirit, just like when you look at 1 Corinthians 13. You look at 1 Corinthians, read them and reread them and meditate on them, and then you could tell whether you're walking in the Spirit or not, if you're walking in love or not. And the same thing goes for this here, uh, when you're talking about walking in the Spirit, and this, we'll have, we're walking in the Spirit, we'll have these qualities about us. We'll have these qualities about us. And we won't have a bunch of craziness going on and and all all kinds of disorder going on and you're the only one that can control your own spirit your soul and your body you're the one who takes you there you're the one who decides god gave us that much ability amen praise god so guys i appreciate you let's walk in the spirit let's keep praying let's keep praying for one another and believe in not just people that are sick keep praying for one another Keep, uh, keep moving in the right direction. I don't know, I, I don't know if I told you this or not, but they, did I tell you that the land across the street is under contract? In other words, somebody bought it. But God's got the rest of the story under his control. And uh, maybe he knew, like Phil said this morning, maybe he knew that we weren't at the place where we can handle it. Financially, I know we're not. We only had 50000 to put down on it. It was 200000 but if we get in the right place, and you personally, when you, when you personally get in the right place with God, when you get in the right place and you're firing, I don't know about you, but in a car when it's not firing under all cylinders, it's bad. It's popping all over the place. 
When we get firing on all cylinders and we're walking in harmony with our spirits, our souls, and our bodies, there's nothing that can stop us. Amen. Nothing. Amen. So let's pray, and then I'm going to turn it over to Rocky, and he's going to uh, close the service along with Laurie. Um, I did say to Rocky that um, I, I believe Barb's listening in on us this morning. Instead of she requested no visitors, there's enough people coming in and out of that room. It's, it's, if you've ever been in the hospital, it's really... I know people mean well and they want to bless you and be there, but it's really, it's really a hassle sometimes. So she requested no visitors, but you'll have an opportunity before you go this morning. If you want to say something to her, um, share your love with her, you, you'll be able to do that. So let's pray. Father God, Lord, we praise you today and we bless you and we honor you. And God, we don't think this, but we know that you want us well in our spirits and our souls and in our bodies. And Lord, sometimes we're all out of sorts. We're all out of sorts. But Lord, we know them individual parts now. We know how they work. We know, we know their function. And so Lord, help us to be reminded that what, what, how am I reacting right now? Am I in my soul? Am I in a spirit that's connected to God? Or am I listening to my meathead body? But Lord, we just pray. Today I pray for each and every one of us. And I pray, Lord that as we start to walk in your spirit, that we will see things happening not only in our own personal lives, but we will see things happening outside of our personal lives that will blow our minds, that we'll see victories that we never thought possible. So God, I pray for these people this day. I bless you and thank you for them. I pray for this wonderful facility we have here to meet. I pray for all those that are watching us by Facebook and and. Um, and YouTube, thank you so much for them. And we bless you today and thank you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name and for his glory. And we all said together, amen. Amen. Okay, wait, you got to talk into the mic. She's, she's got, wait, don't talk yet. Don't talk yet. Hello? It's on. Hello? Uh, Lord, just to put it on my heart that uh, our pastor here is always praying for us. And I think that uh, we ought to be praying for him. Any of you saints I know of God, you if you uh, move to come up and lay hands on pastor as he'll stand in for as proxy for his wife also uh being married for over 50 years they're combined together so we'll just link it all together so anyone who has a uh, an unction to come up please come up thank you hallelujah father god we just come before you right now and we ask for blessings on Guy and Barb, Lord, as they're combined together in one flesh 50-some years ago, Lord, they're still together. And we pray healing in her body, Lord, from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, Father God, that she would be healed, that she would be uh, become uh, at ease, let's say, just at ease, comfortable where she's at. Every minute that she's there, that she would feel your spirit uh, in her and all around her, Lord, that the people that she comes in contact with uh, would be impressed uh, by her actions and that she would uh, lead them to Jesus, Father. It's a, it's a good place to, uh, to minister, Lord, actually. But uh, we thank you and we praise you for our pastor that's so faithful to all of us. And we pray that all in Jesus' name. Anybody else have something? Heavenly Father, they're going to be traveling down to Philly this week, Lord. I just want to ask for traveling mercies, for them to have good weather and no hindrances on the road, Lord. I just pray for traveling mercies to give them safety in their travels. Anybody else? We pray right now, Lord God, that you give Pastor Guy the strength, Lord. Give him strength to go through this with Barb, Lord, and just bless him as well as, as healing Barb, Lord, and heal him in, in, in every area that, that he has. Lord, he probably doesn't even know what he needs at this point, Lord, but you do, and we just ask that you bless him. Bless him and bless Barb in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray that your angels go before them and behind them, on the left and on the right, on the top and on the bottom. Be with the doctors, give them insight, give them wisdom. But God, we go through these things so that we would be 
compassionate and have empathy for people that go through these things. But we know that you will get us to the other side. We know that. We thank you for that. And I just pray that you honor Guy and Barb, that you honor them, God, and you answer their cry, all of our cry. And God, they're going to be stronger. You've got work for them to do. It's not time. And we will forever and ever be thankful and praise you for your goodness to the likes of us. In Jesus' name. Father God, as you have given us the word through our pastor, Father, give it back to him, Father. Strengthen his spirit to t take control of the soul and the flesh when needed, oh God. We know the times are here. Father, we just ask that you continue to grow both him and Barb, that they walk by your spirit, Lord God, each and every moment, Father, as, we, as he goes forth. Give him clarity, oh Lord Jesus. In, the, in your precious name we ask, amen.